The internet is a very complicated beast, and even if you think that you're being safe online, there's probably some other place that you didn't realize was actually leaking your data. One of those places is with DNS. So DNS, or domain name system, allows you to take a URL, like let's say youtube.com, and then find out the IP address of the server actually running that website. Now, DNS is useful for a very obvious reason. Most of the time, you don't actually know what IP address that server is running on, especially in cases like that where YouTube isn't just running on a single server, it's actually running on a bunch of different servers. But there is a pretty serious vulnerability with traditional DNS. DNS requests are sent as unencrypted plain text. So every single middleman looking at your traffic, whether that be your ISP, the enterprise you work for, the university you're attending, or even someone trying to do something malicious, can both read every single website you're trying to connect to, as well as go and modify those packets. So this can be used for things like, say, targeted marketing. That's probably the least bad thing that can be done. It could also be used for things like, say, working out that you like to visit some very sketchy websites out there and look at some very weird adult content, which I feel like a lot of people don't exactly want to be public information. So what is the solution then? Well, one of the solutions is a system known as DNS over HTTPS. So to understand what this is, we need to actually understand what HTTPS is. So an HTTP packet is basically the general packet being used to send data back and forth from a server. So if you want to go and say, load up a website, that data is going to be sent on an HTTP packet. If you want to send any data from the website, that'll be sent to the server in an HTTP packet. But like with DNS, an HTTP packet or hypertext transfer protocol is unencrypted. So HTTPS is basically the encrypted form of that. Basically because sending things like passwords or banking information is not really a good idea over an unencrypted connection. So basically what DNS over HTTPS is, is you take your DNS packets and then encrypt them in the same way that you would go and encrypt an HTTP packet and effectively make them look like they are an HTTPS packet, sending them over the exact same port that you would send those packets. So someone snooping your network traffic would not see any DNS requests, they would just see a bunch of HTTPS requests. Yes, there are other ones, but for the sake of what we're talking about now, that is all that's important. Now, this isn't a magic solution that just makes you completely private on the internet. That is not the point whatsoever. What it is, though, is one of the pieces needed to actually make real internet privacy an actual reality. What you get from it is it makes it much, much harder for anyone snooping your internet traffic to actually see the sites that you're trying to visit. What this does mean is that it can be used to circumvent a lot of blocks. So... Whether you're at a school or even a country-wide block, a lot of blocks are done at a DNS level because up until fairly recently, that was a relatively effective way to do it. But by doing this, it makes it so all of these connections look like HTTPS connections and never get checked by that DNS block. Now, as I said, you're not completely private. There are other places that actually leak your data. So don't go and do something dumb like, I don't know, try to connect outside of the Great Firewall of China. But you can do it. Also, assuming the encryption is working, it prevents DNS spoofing, where someone could go and take your DNS packets and then replace them with something else. Let's say you're trying to connect to... PayPal.com, for example, someone takes that packet, replaces it with another website that looks like PayPal, but is trying to steal your data. This basically stops that from happening, at least in this part of the data chain. Now, a lot of the proponents of DNS over HTTPS basically bring up things like SNI or server name indication and OCSP or online certificate status protocol because these systems also leak most of the data in your DNS packet anyway. The problem with this argument is that there are systems being made to replace these systems that address the problem. So for SNI, we have eSNI or encrypted SNI, and for OCSP, we have OCSP stapling. Now, even with both those addressed, there is still one other place that needs to be fixed, and that is with the start of the TLS handshake. So that will leak your destination IP address, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but this article right here titled, What Can You Learn From An IP Address, which is based on an accompanying research paper, demonstrates that just by knowing the destination IP address, 95.7% of the time, you can fingerprint the website the person is trying to visit, 
effectively circumventing the DNS process anyway. As I said, the internet is a very complicated beast and little bits of data are being leaked everywhere. Now there is a bit of a problem with DNS over HTTPS which from now on I'll just call DOH. Not every single DNS server out there actually supports it. In fact, only a very small minority of them actually do. The main ones that do are Cloudflare and Google, which for obvious reasons leads to a lot more centralization of DNS traffic. And these DNS resolvers, we're not really sure what they're doing with the traffic on their side. But to be fair, even in the DNS case, we weren't really sure what they were doing anyway. Now this problem will be addressed as the protocol does age because right now it's only been out for about three or so years and also you could just go and host your own resolver anyway and completely circumvent the issue. Which if you are very very concerned about privacy you should be doing anyway. It's not really that difficult to set up a DNS server, there are tons of articles on how to do it, it'll probably take you at most like an hour or two to really set up. Now, I mentioned avoiding block lists being a massive advantage. It's also a massive drawback as well, because you can't go and set up your own DNS blocking either. So, if you want to go and, say, do a DNS block for the Amazon URLs, for example, it just straight up won't work. Now, there are other ways you can go and block stuff, but DNS blocking in particular will not function anymore. So, let's say you're a parent who wants to set up some parental controls. You can't actually block websites through DNS and stop your kids accessing whatever websites you don't want them to access. Also, it makes it much, much harder to spot malware. So, this article right here basically goes over a malware strain that was using DNS over HTTPS to basically hide what it was doing. And... Yeah, it's a problem that's going to get worse and worse as time goes on. The more you care about privacy, the harder stopping things like this is going to be. Now, initial support for this was mainly coming from the browser side, so from things like Chrome and Edge and Firefox. I believe part of the reason for this is companies like Mozilla obviously don't have a... Uh, operating system they can maintain, but it also works as a good proof of concept to see if this actually is a feature that makes sense to implement, because in the case of Microsoft and Google, since then, they actually have integrated into their operating system, so Google on Android and Microsoft on Windows. It can be enabled system-wide. On the Linux side, the support is a little bit sketchier and requires a little bit of extra work to actually get functioning properly. So in the case of just web browsers, Currently, only Edge and Firefox actually support it. Inside of the US, I believe Firefox enables it by default. Edge, on the other hand, you have to go and enable it yourself. Now, as for doing it system-wide, you can't just go and enable it in Network Manager and run it like that just fine. You have to go and download a DNS over HTTPS client, such as the one called DNS over HTTPS, and that effectively acts as the middleman for your network traffic, encrypting it before it actually leaves your system. However, if it's being done at the OS level, there is another competing system to be used instead, and that is DNS over TLS. So this effectively scraps the whole idea of taking the DNS packet and then making it look like an HTTPS packet and then sending it over the same port as all of that other traffic. What it does instead is takes the DNS packet and encrypts it with TLS like you would encrypt the HTTP packet, but also sends them over a separate port. So these encrypted packets are sent over port 853 compared to regular DNS packets over port 53 and HTTPS packets over port 443. Now this standard has been around for a couple of years longer since about 2016 compared to 2018, so more DNS servers actually support this feature, leading to less centralization. But as I said earlier, that's a problem that gets resolved with time. The problem this has though, even though it will probably be faster not having the overhead of HTTPS, is that it's very obviously encrypted DNS traffic by being on a different port. While it is going to be just as encrypted as the DOH traffic, having that encrypted traffic in somewhere like, say, China, might put a massive red flag on you because, like, why are you sending this encrypted data? I don't care what's inside of it, why are you sending it? Plus, because it is on a separate port, it would be very easy to just do a nationwide block on that data. Compared to DOH, where if you go and block HTTPS traffic, well, now you've basically blocked the internet. 
So it's a matter of privacy versus security. DOH is arguably more private because the traffic is hidden inside of other traffic and no one really knows that you're sending that traffic, but DOT or DNS over TLS is arguably more secure because it actually still gives you the ability to do things like be a network admin and monitor your DNS traffic on your network. But hey, if you want to go set up your own DNS resolver, maybe go and do so over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available, like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo, because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. Do you use DNS over HTTPS? Do you use DNS over TLS? Do you just don't, just not care at all about your data? Give your data to everyone who could ever want it. Let me know what you do in the comment section down below. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bender, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Pity, Stephen, uh, Tees through Tony Tushar and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to go support work, the links down below to all of my things. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I also have a gaming channel where I stream twice a week playing various video games. Check that out at Brody Robertson Plays on YouTube and Twitch. And also, this channel is available on other platforms like Odyssey if you'd like to watch it somewhere that isn't YouTube. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.